Rusty, I don't know how to do it. Sound some sirens, sound some alerts. Georgia just got a commitment. Jordan Thomas, a, a 6'5", 300, 310-pound, 320-pound, uh, depending on where you look, defensive lineman out of New Jersey. Um, how big is it, man? It's a big deal. I mean, you go into the northeast area and you beat Michigan, you beat Penn State, and you beat all those schools up there, South Carolina. All the schools in the south were involved here too. But, um, you know, we both know they need interior defensive linemen. They need guys, big body humans, and there's only so many of these, Jake. So when you look at Jordan Thomas, a kid out of Don Bosco, uh, Trey Scott obviously was on him a long time, but you heard it in the story we wrote here on Dogs HQ. He's told He told me last night that Fran Brown closed this deal. And, Jake, it's beginning to be kind of a repetitive deal. Fran Brown, this defensive back coach that Kirby Smart hires from Rutgers, and, man, it is paying off right now with Georgia landing some big guys. And uh, this is definitely a big one. I wasn't really in the mix per se, when Georgia hired Fran Brown, um, mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, it, it, I'll be honest with you, man. Like I have, I knew nothing about him, um, but I tell you what, I sat down with him at national championship media day. I didn't get a chance to before the peach bowl, but it's kind of an open room. And I sat down and I spent about 10 minutes with him. Yeah. And, you know, part of it was off the record, you know, just because mm -hmm. kind of, I wanted to see if I could get some tidbits, some knowledge about what was going on. He had some good stuff, some stuff that I've shared, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, through other notes and stuff, but impressive, impressive person. And when Kirby Smart said prior to last season, Rusty, and I don't want to make this a Fran Brown show, but when Kirby Smart said prior to last season, this coaching staff is one of the best I've been a part of, I'm told Fran Brown was a big part of that because of the way he fit right into it, the, you know, the personality, the, the seriousness, the knowledge, the, the, the work ethic that, that he fit right into that, and, and that carries over into recruiting as well. You got to be an alpha recruiter, especially a defensive back. You could imagine being in a room with Kirby Smart and Will Muschamp all day long, every day. Uh, you know, those two are hands on as well with the defensive backs. But when you look at Fran Brown, what he has done in such a short time, I'm telling you now, he hadn't only just won battles up the East Coast, he's won battles in Georgia and he's won battles in Florida. I mean, he, and these guys are, uh, they're playing and he's winning recruiting battles. But it, today, uh, take nothing away from Trey Scott as well. Trey Scott is uh, has really turned that narrative. Jake, we've covered his team a long time, and, and remember that narrative that Georgia don't put defensive linemen uh, in the NFL. You look at the quote from Jordan Thomas today. He goes, "Georgia is a D line factory," and I'll be be honest with you, that might be the first time that I've heard that. So it kind of tells you the narrative is completely flipped, and a lot of that goes back to Trey Scott. Uh, but certainly, man, when you look at this kid right here at 6'5 and a half, 6'6, 320, 325, uh, man, Georgia's got to be excited. And he said he's shutting it down. And he's also going to be a mid year, which is key. You know, one of the things I like about him, Rusty, is, you know, he, he has played the game at a lighter weight. And he came in, he measured in at Georgia well over 300 pounds. So mm -hmm. you know, he has the ability to carry that weight. You know, he has the ability to maybe drop some of it, play it maybe 290, 300. Mm -hmm. Um, I know this is not flashy what I'm about to say, but he kind of reminds me just in terms of what he can do for you and the hats he can wear for you to Zion Lowe because yeah. he's got that same type of frame that, oh, man, I bet he could be an elite offensive tackle if you really wanted to type frame. But he's athletic, plenty athletic enough to play defensive line. He can play in. He can play tackle. He can play nose. He can do a lot of different things for you. And I think when you look at a big defensive line class like this, where Georgia needs ends and they need three techs and they need a nose, this kind of guy's invaluable. Yeah. I mean, look, it's we could go on. I mean, you could talk X and O's. We could get this thing way off. So we could talk about people coming out of their hips and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but you want to talk about big bodies and how this game is won and the physicality of big bodies. You and I both were at the Georgia Ohio State game when those two teams walked out. And, you know, we, we've seen those types, Georgia, Alabama. I mean, there's only so many. I can't say it enough. There's only so many of these types per class. And you've got to stack these guys. And I tell you right now, this, this is a guy that Georgia fans may know a little bit about, but they should know a lot about. Should be very excited. I think Jordan Thomas has got a, he's got a two- or three-year starter uh, in him. I think he's going to be play meaningful minutes pretty quick. Uh, it's hard to kind of start as a freshman there at that position, but – I think as things go down the line a couple of years from now, you look go back and look at this Jordan Thomas commit. And today, 
will be a big day for the future of Georgia, especially on that defensive front. I really, really like this kid. Big seven-day period for Georgia on the defensive line, too. Justin Green comes in. I believe it was 7 a.m. last Tuesday morning. Um, and then uh, at least Jordan Thomas had the decency to, to wait out until uh, till this afternoon. But um, So that's that's where it's at right now, too. How many more do you think, man? Uh, I would be – I think Georgia's trying to get five, a good mixture. They've got to have five techs. You know, you talk about it all the time. We talk about it all the time. Justin Green was massive. So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows the names out there, and, and they've got to have these big body defenders. they got to have guys that can play on the inside. they got to have guys that can play in that five technique. And, again, Justin Green, I don't think kind of was a household name until recently. I kept telling everybody, look, this guy is higher on the boards at Georgia than you think. And, they got him on that visit, and they got him to shut down. So, Trey Scott, man, he's doing work. Still got work to do in this class. But I'm telling you now, they got some real potential for this to be one of the best defensive line classes in Georgia in a long, long time. Now, they got to close some guys, but they got some highly rated in the recruiting industry targets, and they got some highly rated guys on that UGA recruiting board, which is most important, still left out there. And, uh, you know, my buddy always tells me over a three foot putt, man, there's a lot of meat left on that bone. So, uh, you, you know, Georgia's got some guys left and it's going to be real interesting because this is a huge class on this defensive line. If Georgia knocks it out of the park with defensive linemen in this class, man, the future for that room. Because mm. it's not exactly loaded in state. I mean, Justin Green in state is, you know, I can't really think of another guy right now that really, you know, blows you away um, as far as the in state guys. Uh, well, Edric Houston is also yeah, a guy. Yeah, Edric Houston, yeah. yeah I consider him more of an edge, I guess. That's an edge guy, yeah. So they, there's really, you know, there's a guy at Creekside I've mentioned on our board a little bit. Don't sleep on him at six foot five, 300 and maybe 370 plus. So <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see him. I'll see him later this week. So probably have more for Dogs HQ. But yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his name either. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll, I'll find out when we get there. But I know he's, a, he's a, <laughs> you talking about a massive human being. He is a massive human being. I talked to the Warner Robin staff and They've played him two years in a row. They're like, look, dude, we we basically gave up. Like, we just stayed away from that interior. We played Creekside. So, that's the kind of stuff you want to hear. Yeah. I've played like that. And, you know, you got Joseph uh, Jonah Ajanye, um, a guy that George is trending for there, too. Yeah. Uh, what official visit coming up on June 23rd, I believe, right? Yep. And Williams Noari, who was already there last week. I mean, there, there's a lot of guys very highly rated that George is still on. So, uh, you look at those guys, and like, again, yeah, there's only so many. If Jordan winds up getting four or five of those, whew, what a yeah. class. And you got Justin Scott. You got the Breeland kid from out in California. Yep. Um, you know, Trey Scott's, you know, Trey Scott still, he, he needs to fill those spots. Yep. So that's the, that's kind of the concern. But there are a lot of bodies there still left to fill that spot. And so they're still evaluating. Um, good chance that there's somebody that comes up here in the next, you know, month or so that, that were, that they've, focus in on that we don't necessarily know about. I mean, listen, we didn't – we weren't talking about Jordan Thomas uh, mm -mm. two weeks ago either, uh, about mm -mm. him being on the commitment list. And here we are. He's on the commitment list. All right, Rusty, appreciate it, man. We'll have you covered over at Dogs HQ. We've got this entire commitment surrounded. Come see us right now, 50% off of a full year uh, membership over at Dogs HQ. That's only for a couple more days. Or you can just try us out, give us three months, and uh, that'll only cost you a dollar. So come see us over at Dodge HQ. And in addition to that, like and subscribe, uh, join our channel. We'll see you later.